Hello, welcome to AP Sources Simplified. Today we are looking at an important foreign and nuclear policy speech titled Atoms for Peace, delivered in the United Nations in December of 1953 by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Before looking at the key details of the speech, let's take a look at the context. When World War II came to an end in 1945, two countries on the victorious side emerged as global powers, which were the United States and Soviet Union. These two poles of power also represented two different ideologies, with democracy and capitalism being the United States, and communism with the Soviet Union. While they got along to defeat the Axis powers in World War II, relations quickly became frosty and suspicious by the end of the war, and immediately after. These two powers settled into what is known as brinksmanship, which is the practice of pursuing a dangerous policy to the limits of safety before stopping. Examples of this are the series of international incidents that led, to, led the two emerging superpowers to the brink of war. One of them was a dispute over the capital city of Berlin, which lied within the occupied zone of the Soviet Union, but the city itself was divided up between the U.S. and its allies and the Soviet Union. The Soviets blockaded the city for a time, and the U.S. ran supply airlifts to keep their part of the city from falling into Soviet hands. Then in 1950, war broke out in the Korean Peninsula between South Korea, backed by the U.S.-led United Nations forces, and North Korea supported diplomatically and strategically by the Soviet Union. Also, for a short period of time, the U.S. had a trump card in being the only country with nuclear weapons. However, the Soviet Union developed and successfully tested their own in 1949. And soon after that, the United States and Soviet Union developed the next generation of nuclear weapons, fusion bombs, which were far more powerful than fission bombs and are capable of tremendous destruction. Dwight D. Eisenhower won the election in 1952, bringing the first Republican to office in over 20 years. Eisenhower also brought with him a wealth of military and foreign policy knowledge. He had been a leading general in World War II and was highly respected by allies and enemies. What may be as a surprise because of his military background is Eisenhower was very interested in scaling back military expenditures and nuclear weapons development, along with decreasing tensions between the U.S. and Soviet Union. He had grand ideas about utilizing nuclear technology for peace rather than war. Eisenhower will discuss these ideas in a speech delivered to the United Nations in December of 1953. Now taking a look at the key details of Eisenhower's Adams for Peace speech, Eisenhower starts by discussing the goal of world peace and happiness for all of mankind. Then Eisenhower moves to the great problems of the atomic age, specifically how rapidly atomic technology has been developed, and that it is a global issue for reasons including the stockpiles of atomic weapons continues to grow, more and more countries are unlocking the secrets to atomic technology and making their own weapons, and humankind cannot rely on mutually assured destruction or MAD as the default for avoidance of a nuclear war. Eisenhower argues the need to change the narrative around nuclear technology from a destructive to constructive viewpoint. The major powers need to reach agreements on various issues and not result to armed conflict. In a nod to communism in the Soviet Union, Eisenhower says people of every nation have the right to choose their own way of life. Then Eisenhower proposes a path forward for atomic technology, that is to switch from a focus on weapons to a focus on energy. And the United States is willing to help countries develop nuclear energy. And finally, an International Atomic Energy Commission would oversee the development of nuclear power and make sure the technology was not being used for weapons. Moving on to Eisenhower's intentions. Eisenhower's point of view is that of a former general and then current president during a critical time in the Cold War. His audience are leaders of foreign governments, and Eisenhower is attempting to change the course of the atomic age in saying that governments should focus on nuclear energy instead of nuclear weapons. Finally, let's look at the legacy of Adams for Peace. Up to this point, discussions about nuclear weapons and strategy within government and between governments had been secret, but this speech brought these topics out into the public. Ultimately, Adams for Peace was not successful and effective in limiting nuclear weapons development as the stockpiles of nuclear weapons will continue to increase, of which Eisenhower had a hand in as well. 
the U.S. went from 1,000 to 20,000 nuclear weapons during his presidency, and more countries developed nuclear weapons. The speech was successful in creating avenues for more research into nuclear energy and other applications for nuclear technology. And while not directly because of Eisenhower's speech, it will portend the creation of the International Atomic Energy Agency and the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Okay, thanks for watching this video on Eisenhower's Atoms for Peace speech. If you liked the video, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends and classmates.